Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Today, we have a special guest with us today. Well, actually, three special guests with us. Below <laughs> me is Dr. B, Dr. Lauren Berland, and you guys know him from, hold on, the, the Dr. B, all of his product line I have here. He is the inventor of all of this. And also the oh, things are falling. Yeah, also the smile guide, which we're going to get into the smile guide that he designed later, a little bit later on, because I really do want to talk about that because it can be very, very helpful to anybody wanting to pick out their shape of teeth. And then next to Dr. B, we have Jan from Simply Jan Homestead. Hey guys. She has implants with snap indentures. And above Jan, we have Ash Mac Beard Ventures and Implants. That's a long one. And she has four, what you have four implants on the top and then four on the bottom. Mm -hmm. and she's getting the all on four where her, her teeth are going to be screwed down in. So hi everybody and welcome. Hi. Hello. Hi. <laughs> hi. Hi everybody in the comments too. I'm glad you're here. And if you have any questions about anything, we can go, we're going to talk a little bit implants in that line, but if you have any questions on anything else related to dentures, feel free to ask. We have a or anything else. Or anything else. <laughs> Dr. B, how much experience do you have? This is amazing to me. Well, I, I actually started working in a denture lab when I was uh, still 15, almost 16. And oh, wow. so... I'm 67 now, so that means that I'm in my 52nd year in the world of dentures. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's a long time. Well, we have somebody here thinking about giving an all on four. All right. I have, I get this question a lot. It's not a question I get, it's a comment I get that people are surprised when they go to get their implants. A lot of people think that if they're going to get like snap indentures, they're going to get their implants and their snap indentures in a, in a week or two, and they're going to be done. And that's not the case. Can you explain how long it takes to do implants and the healing and how long it actually may take a person to get, get their dentures? Uh, generally speaking, it takes three to six months from the time the implants have been placed to the time you can engage them. Though, you know, there are different dentists and different patients where they can do it sooner and some it takes even longer. Um, but that's a general rule. But generally, once you place the implant and you put a soft, or the implants and you put a soft reline in the denture, um, and especially, we, I always made a new denture uh, while we were preparing the snap ins because usually the people I was saying had old dentures and they had problems with them. The teeth were worn down. Maybe they didn't like the way they looked. Whatever reasons, uh, I would always try to make the best denture I could or the best upper and lower denture, whatever dentures I could for them. And then we, then we would see if they even wanted implants, you know, it could be that if we made them a better denture, they, you know, we didn't necessarily have to go to a, a snap in and implants. And if we do go with implants, it's way better to plan the way the teeth should fit and feel and look uh, before we uh, engage the implants. It's much easier. Uh, so, you know, I, I would like to go slow typically. Of course, you know, there were people who came in and they knew they wanted implants and a snap-on, just like there's people who knew they wanted uh, a fixed implant bridge like uh, Ashley's doing. Um, so, you know, everybody is different. But going back, typically it's a three to six month process. What do, what do you think, Jan? Well, it took me eight. And, okay, well, um, I said it could take a year. It depends on everybody. Yeah, I it might have been seven, but I, my dog ate my dentures, so oh, they surprised uh, me <laughs> and made a new set. And, yeah, I can imagine they that. just <laughs> that day. So um, yeah, he it was quite 
a shock. <laughs> so don't right. ever leave your dentures down, y'all, ever, if you have a dog, <laughs> ever. And he was a I, puppy, well, so. put them in your mouth, so they think it's food because they see you putting it all in your mouth and stuff. So the minute they can get their hands on it, they're going to. <laughs> He's like, ooh, a new um, toy. <laughs> right. right. Jan, do you mind um, telling everybody how much you paid for your snap indenture? Uh, my set was thirteen six. Oh, that way, yeah. Oh, we got two of you now. Hold on, let me get rid of this. One. Yeah, I got rid of that other one. Thank you. Okay, there we go. Okay, okay. I lost it and I re reloaded it. Well, I saw I saw two of you down there. One of you is moving, and one of you isn't. Who's <laughs> better than one? Jan, how much did you pay? Thirteen thousand six hundred. Okay, is that with your extractions included? Yeah, that was everything. The right price. Yeah. Yeah. Ashley, do you well, mind? Go ahead, Jan. Uh, I've told this story before, but I had looked in Texas when we lived there, and I got a quote there, and it was about thirteen. And so when I moved to Missouri and I found the DDS here, um, they said, well, it's going to be, it was like 14. I go, no, I, I've got a quote from Texas. It was two years old though, you know, and I said, can't you come close to that? And he goes, well, how about uh, 13, six? I said, okay, deal. <laughs> you know? Because, oh, yeah. you know, that quote was two years old. So. That's good, but yeah, <laughs> but well. they were awesome. That's um, the important thing. Yeah. Ashley, do you mind telling what your yours is costing? Sure. But let, me have, let me say a little disclaimer here. My grandfather passed away, and he left me a small inheritance. And that's, that's what I used for my teeth. You know, otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to afford it either. Yeah. Um, so the... The implants yeah. and the E-Day and all of that, not not the teeth, just E-Day and the implants was 18000 And that's for eight implants. And then for the teeth, um, I did pay like 1200 or so for my, for my immediate dentures that I'm still wearing now. And then I paid another 18000 for the zirconias that I haven't got yet. Um, so in all, it was like, probably around $38,000. Yeah, that's... So it, was, it was a lot. So that's oh, why I want to get them right. <laughs> I need yeah. them to be right. Yeah, they will yes. be. They will be. Yeah, yeah. It's scary. Okay. Well, I... There's not much I can... I'm surprised You're I even kidding. have life <laughs> so. and has trouble with her internet once in a while and today's the once in a while um it happens i'm yeah. glad it's not me for once <laughs> <laughs> um, Dr. i mean i look you, good over here but... sorry you really sorry. good <laughs> um can you explain what a bone graph is to to everybody uh sure um there's all different kinds of bone grafts uh there's the autogenous bone graft where they take bone your own bone um there's synthetic bone and there is bovine bone uh generally uh your own bone is the best uh but the synthetic bone or reprocessed bone is probably the most popular is that like powder that you mix with how, how do you it's a powder and you know a lot of it now is being done with platelet uh surgery to okay. increase the healing uh let me tell you implants and bone grafting bone grafting is really when implants became successful because i remember back in the late 70s and 80s and implants um were not so successful <laughs> in right. fact there were people dentists uh, leading authorities who said implants may never be successful because of uh, the contact that they have with the oral cavity and the microbes and the possibility of infection. 
And then when they started doing bone grafting in the 90s, the success rate of implants just shot up. I mean, in the 80s, you know, people would ask almost as often, you know, why did this implant fail? They were also asking, how did this implant succeed? <laughs> but uh, now mm -hmm. implants, thanks to bone grafting, is probably, you know, it's one of the most successful and predictable procedures. <laughs> Yes, Ashley. Um, I got the socket preservation grafting where they, when they take your teeth out and they, they have this like composite in a, in a squirt thing and they squirt it in the sockets while that's, like that's during eight days. Yeah. Yes. That's what I had. Hmm. They even have uh, methods for bone grafting where they grind up the teeth, but it's hard to find a good healthy tooth and somebody that was removed for that. But in, in that case, uh, that's very successful too. Uh, there's all kinds of uh, methods and materials for bone grafting now. It's just a matter of choosing the right one for the right situation. Now, how fast yeah. does somebody? How fast do you lose bone? Oh my gosh, that is pretty <laughs> hard to predict. There's okay. so many variables. Uh, the person's general health the person's diet, the person's uh, medications, um, gosh, habits, uh, certain habits are deleterious to bone, uh, and genetics. Genetics are really important, and I hate to say it, but previous dentistry. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, I mean, if, if people had their teeth removed and it was not done, uh, maybe in a more conservative, careful manner, if they weren't doing socket preservation, like uh, Ashley was talking about, because that's been around a long time. That's very predictable uh, and, and in the right situations, ideal. But, you know, if, if the teeth were removed in a not so um, predictable and conservative manner, I mean, a lot of bone can be lost during the extractions. And then, of course, there's trauma and there's periodontal disease before the extractions. There's so many variables. I mean, somebody who had uh, all their teeth but had severe periodontal disease, a lot of bone loss, and then they had to have the tooth removed because they were all loose, they're going to you know, have a lot more bone loss right away. Okay, someone said, Christina said, can someone talk about oral health? Can someone talk about oral health and problems possible with either reclast or Zometa infusions? I don't know what that is. I've Recla never heard of that one. Me neither, I'm a little confused. Yeah, I don't know what that, so it, infusions, I don't know what that means. Oh, is she talking about maybe um, uh, like <clears throat> a treatment for osteoporosis? I don't know. I don't know. Christina, what exactly are you talking about? Well, I'll wait for her to answer there, but I'm going to go ahead with another question. Osteoporosis, osteoporosis she said. Uh, uh, yes, there is a problem with osteoporosis, and she would have to talk to her dentist about it. Osteoporosis is one of those, um, uh, the, the, the medications for it, the Boniva, the Fosamax, while they're supposed to strengthen and solidify bone, they've also found that it can uh, weaken the bone in the lower jaw particularly and weaken teeth. Uh, I remember when Fosamax started coming out in the mid-2000s uh, mid, uh, and we started seeing problems with people who never had problems before. And then the warnings came out uh, that these osteoporosis medications could cause jaw problems. Um, you know, I hate to say it, but I've seen it over and over again uh, in my career in dentistry and in medicine. When it comes to healthcare, you know, we're all just uh, guinea pigs. And uh, I'm not saying that if you're taking these medications, it precludes um, getting dental implants, 
but you'll have to discuss this in great detail with your dentist. Yeah. Okay. We have a question for Michael. Well, wow, you got tons of them. I know. <laughs> After you get your extractions done, you have immediate dentures and or your permanent dentures. How long do you have until you are no longer able to get the implants if you choose that route afterwards? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. Is this for me? <laughs> yeah. Well, it could be because you know what? I've decided that I'm going to go the implant route. I'm not sure when I'm going to do it, but I'm going to start on the bottom. When, sh when, can, when should I start that? That's kind of what he wants to know. Well, generally speaking, the sooner the better. Um, mm -hmm. Because as time goes on, as I said, bone loss is inevitable, though you can't predict at which rate or, you know, I mean, you could kind of predict. Uh, but the one thing you can predict is there'll be a loss of bone. So the sooner you do it, the better off you are. Okay. That said, you know, I've seen, you know, my career, I saw lots of people who had dentures for 20 years and we were able to do implant supported dentures uh, without any bone grafting. And then others, we had to do bone grafting. It, it all depended on the yeah. person's condition. Well, I know that yeah. since starting my channel, a lot of people do not have a good bottom ridge. Right. Uh, <laughs> and you know, the standard of care uh, according to the American Dental Association and the American Academy of Prosthodontists is no longer a plain lower denture, though, you know, millions of people uh, survive and thrive with a lower denture. I mean, I know lots of people very happy with a full lower denture, but uh, the standard of care now is two implants and a snap indenture for the lower um you, you know that that is what is generally accepted the minimum treatment for a lower ridge well that's what the next time i go into my dentist i know i'm going to talk to him about that and how good my ridge looks and if i can wait another year if it's okay i'm going to have that conversation because i know for sure i'm going to do implants on the bottom and you know when i say this is the standard of care um you know they're not covered by insurance uh it's not covered by medicare and i really think a lot of things have to change about dental care and medicare in this country and insurance i mean in in europe and germany implants are part of medical treatment because it affects people's quality of life i right. mean there's no doubt done correctly just two implants and a snap in on the bottom will improve somebody's life immensely mm -hmm. and probably not just the, improve their life but probably lengthen their life so there's exactly. a lot of reasons for it i mean it's not uh it's really not elective it, it's it's part of medical care i believe that because i had before i had all my teeth removed i had chronic bronchitis i was sick more than i wasn't sick like three weeks out of the month and now I, I don't get sick anymore. Oh, I, I saw this all the time in my practice. Um, in fact, um, we saw the Dean, probably one of the most celebrated uh, deans of medical schools in the entire world. And he came in with severe periodontal disease. And I mean, he came in, he was an old man. He was still the Dean. He was in his, late 70s and he hobbled in and quite frankly i was afraid the guy was going to die on <laughs> oh good and uh, we removed the infection and the infected teeth and we made him bridges and after that he took incredible care of his life of his teeth um he sprang back to health two years later he comes in and i mean the guy's driving and he's jumping around he's 80 years old he's got more energy than a 20 year old and he told me that i saved his life he said before i you know removed the bad teeth he was constantly hospitalized at the medical school with pneumonia 
Um, he was always having gram negative bacteria infections. They kept recurring. Nobody told him it was his teeth. And, you know, we fixed him. He says, I haven't been sick since. And since then, you know, I knew a lot of medical students who went to, <laughs> they said, oh yeah, Dr. Selden made us check everybody's mouth and teeth after that. He, you know, he became obsessed with uh, oral health at the medical school. And I mean, I, I saw one, I could go on and on with anecdotes. Yeah. One guy that really, he came in, he had one infected, he had bad teeth. He, he was missing both of his teeth. He had a denture that was resting on one really bad tooth. And he hobbles in, he's got terrible back. And, you know, I don't know how he was going to sit through the procedure. And then he comes back for the post-op a few days later and he's walking straight. He says, Jesus Christ, I haven't walked straight in 20 years. The day wow. after you pulled my tooth, my back was all better. And, you know, that's a little dramatic, wow. but I could go on and on. You know, um, I don't know where and how the mouth became separated from medicine because when you look at it, every dental school, or at least originally every dental school, now they're popping up uh, these for-profit dental schools, but don't get me started on that. But every dental school was originally associated with a medical school, and most of them still are. And that tells you that dentistry was really the first medical specialty. Um, so yeah, you know the hip bones connected to the thigh bone, and the mouth is connected to everything. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, I went on and on. <laughs> and it's connected to it's connected to your mental health more than anything. You know, oh, yeah. just having new teeth and a smile. You can walk into a room and you don't want to hide yourself. You know, you're going to be happier. You're going to be more confident. All of that. And, you know, it's, it's, and it, it, it's becoming more and more important, with, especially with social media, Instagram, uh, Zoom calls. Uh, mm -hmm. People are much more aware of it. So, yes, it's it's really it's so debilitating. It to is have a jacked up smile. I mean, that's yeah. probably the biggest uh, issue is psychological. It is. And then getting and then you know, crossing that border to find, to walk into a dentist uh, when you're so self-conscious. <laughs> I mean, yeah. so many dentists are judgmental when they should be so helpful. Yeah. Um, and then finding a dentist, it, it's, 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 it's very, it's a terrible, it's very challenging. Yeah. Um, I wish I knew now. Sorry, I missed. So I hope you we can help think, somebody else. I think you froze. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's okay. What'd you say? Where did everybody go? Where did everybody go? I'm here. That must be my internet. Oh, okay. Please. You know, I pay for the fast feed. Mm -hmm, I do. Can you tell us? <laughs> <laughs> um, said they could barely hear have, me. Let me fix my volume. No, that's that's my highest volume. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I can't turn it up anymore here on this side. Ashley, what you were you saying? Up? I don't even know. Like, well, somebody was texting my phone, so it <laughs> it messed up my sound. If you knew I now, then what you knew now, something. Oh, okay. Yeah, just that if I knew the then that I know now, like just things to look for when picking out a dentist and, you know, their experience and that kind of stuff. Just, just, I mean, I did my research a little bit, but I really got into all of this after, you know, it was already said and done. So I just wish that I knew this info before. Well, yeah. Michelle is trying to fix that. And so are you for, exactly. for everybody else and Jan Me for too. everybody else coming, <laughs> coming along. You yeah. know, I, I, I marvel about these Facebook groups and YouTube. You cannot imagine because you've, you've, I hate to say you've come of age, you know, <laughs> you entered this denture world in the internet world. But I, as a dentist, 
and seeing what's going on and so much support and so much advice you give each other and useful advice, firsthand advice, better advice than you'll get from most dentists. Um, yeah. I don't know how anybody survived, how my patient survived without this. I don't either. I, I did really do don't. a lot of YouTube binging before my E-Day. I had about a month because it was the holidays and I didn't want to do the E-Day right before Christmas. So I waited and I had, I don't know, three or four weeks just to binge everything I could find. And I can't imagine having gone into that, not being prepared and not knowing what was coming. I don't think I would have made it. I don't, I don't know that I would have. There's nothing standard out there. You really... You know, every dental office is different. You don't know what to ask for. You don't know what to look for. And you're scared. And as you said, psychologically, you're handicapped. You're frightened. Uh, it's expensive. It's scary. It hurts. Um, it's embarrassing, too. It's embarrassing. Yeah. And here you have a place where you can all, everybody can talk and share it's it, this is really a wonderful thing. It I mean, is. if I was still practicing, I would direct all of my patients to uh, these Facebook groups and YouTube. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, we have a comment to two of them. We're going to do this one first. Someone said, "So can one skip directly from immediates to implants, skipping the so-called real or permanent venture?" Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you don't. That's what Jan did. Jan, and then somebody they want they want you guys to tell your story. Jan, can you tell your story? How you ended up getting yours? Uh, yeah, sure. I um, I had a probably in my twenties. Um, all my back teeth rotted because I got real sick, and I wasn't. Uh, I didn't have a lot of money, and I wasn't eating right, and my teeth rotted. And I got all my back teeth pulled out um, on my bottom and a lot on top as well. But I had more on top. And so as life went on, you know, you're I'm eating in the front of your mouth. And um, all my teeth started to deteriorate and uh, crack and chip and rot some more. And it... Um, there was an opportunity where we we had moved from Texas to Missouri, and there was an opportunity to um, <clears throat> revisit it. And uh, you know, there was a lot of tears and crying, and you know, going back and forth. And oh, I'm going to have the ugly old lady face when I don't have my dentures in. And that was the hardest thing for me to get past. It, you know, just how your mouth changes and um so that was i didn't i didn't know how my husband would react and he's like i don't I, you're more important than what your mouth looks like to me and i was like okay and you know so i cried some more and i went back and forth and i finally bit the bullet and went into the dentist and um just they were so incredible i i'm telling you i feel like i'm blessed beyond measure because i went in there and everything was like clockwork and i didn't have i didn't never got infections i never needed bone grafts i had plenty bone which that was my biggest concern because you know i'm 65 right now and i and i was 63 when i had it done so i was really concerned about that because my mom uh, she did not have healthy bone in her mouth. And I thought, oh, I'm going to get that. And, you know, but I did. And so um, I, I decided on two on the bottom and four on top. And uh, I haven't, I, I mean, you know, you have your adjustments and you go through the changes and your mouth heals and, and um, then you get your, your post in and, that was probably the hardest thing for me is getting my post in because they give you a million shots. When I had my teeth pulled, I had them knock me out because I'm a snowflake. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, yeah. But uh, then when I had the post put in, um, 
and I know there's a word for it, but don't don't make me go there. I don't. <laughs> I just so, uh, they there was shots involved, but my dentist was again incredible and so patient and gentle with me, and uh, I then the journey began to get my permanence in, and it was it was I I can't complain. I mean I I had to me the perfect. Uh, situation I, I just didn't have I, I had to get new bands put in um, you know in my dentures to hold them a little better but mm -hmm. other than that, and my bite had to get adjusted uh, I, it was a little stuff you know so I uh, I'm just incredibly happy with the snap-ins and and um uh, everything i you know everything i went through so yeah so that's my story i was able to Good jan story. helped me through mine jan and justin and i called jan all the time what's just happening to me <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> a lot okay, of michael, all right, michael asks he said it's been 21 days the area where i got the shot of novocaine in the roof of my mouth is still numb is, is that normal it's still what I numb uh no that's not normal yeah. <laughs> you should tell his dentist yeah, uh, 21 to... days for the palate to still be normal is it swollen michael asked is it swollen michael okay then we'll wait for his answer okay. and sue asks she said i have a full denture on top can i get all on four on top with the snap on denture with the snap on dentures yeah, I have a full denture on top. Can I get all on four on top with the snap on denture on bottom? Oh, oh I see what you're saying. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Why not? Yeah, you can change it up. Yeah. Do it however you want to do it. What? Hey, Michael. Um, let me see your implants. How well? I bite down very well. I eat steak. Um, the only thing I can't really like not certain nuts i have to break pieces off with my teeth and chew you know i can't eat like a pig anymore you know I, everything's small bites <laughs> and then an apple i have to cut you know i can't chew into an apple um i can but my dentures will pop so uh, uh, can, can i add something to that mm -hmm. um sorry i didn't want to cut you off <laughs> but honestly you know, I've been like studying teeth <laughs> my whole life and going way, way back. And I have a theory that silverware and chopsticks and knives were invented not just to keep our hands clean while we're eating, but I really think they were invented originally to save our teeth. I, think so. uh, I don't think you should be biting into things all the time. I mean, we all do, but here, I can't tell you every summer, every spring, I started seeing every spring, it never happens. I would see at least two people who bit into a peach and broke their front tooth on the seed. Yeah. Never would have happened if they would have sliced it, you know, <laughs> yeah. and then knifed and forked it. And, you know, in Europe and a lot of places, they knife and fork everything. In Asia, they cut it up and they chop it and they eat it with chopsticks. Um, I, I I wouldn't feel bad if you can't eat everything the way you want to because generally, if you you know slice it, cut it, dice it, you can eat everything you want. Yeah. So, so Mike, don't be discouraged. <laughs> and, right. and, you might, and you know maybe that's how some of you broke your teeth by trying to eat everything you want who knows <laughs> yeah. hey I lost my first um, tooth as a child um, eating an apple oh there wow you, first, uh, you know the ones that come out when you're a kid yeah, yeah that, <laughs> we, you know the other thing about that, eating, eating an apple bite in and it'll take that tooth out <laughs> but, mm -hmm. and you know the other thing about eating an apple it's much better to slice it because then you could add peanut butter exactly right? <laughs> caramel dip you know all the good stuff yeah. you know, this is just your new normal now with your teeth it's your new yeah. normal you know right. yeah. 
And no, it's healthier no. to eat smaller bites because you oh. tend to chew it more. And um, the thing, you know, with dentures is you have to get used to is you have that piece up here on your mouth and you're, you're sometimes until you get used to it, your taste changes and you have to, you know, so I'm always sucking all the juices out and I want to get every bit of flavor I can get. And now I've, you know, I'm two years into it. So I, right. um, I don't really experience that, but I do cut my food up way better than I, I mean, instead of eating a bite that big, you know, I have a little bite, <laughs> you know. And it probably digests better too. It, well, exactly. And it improved my health exponentially. I can't even tell you. Right. Yeah. Um, now, somebody wants to know the pros and the cons between a snap indenture and the all on four. Can you, what about cleaning? You want to talk about the pros and cons of cleaning that? Me? Anybody? Uh, well, sure. we wish Ashley could talk about Go it. Ahead, she can. Ashley. Yes. Ashley. Ashley. Ashley can talk about it. Well, um, I haven't quite like got that. them yet, but I've done enough research to know what, what's coming, I guess. But um, usually if you have like an all-in-four, you can either floss or use a water pick. And, you know, with the floss, with the all-in-fours, they're supposed to leave a small gap there. You want to be able to get something through there to floss or water pick, which I've already bought a water pick. It's in my bathroom ready to go. Um, and then snap-ins, of course, you can take them out yourself and put them in the ultrasonic cleaner or clean them with your... Um, Case or whatever, and so they're yeah they're easier to clean. The snap ins are easier to clean. It just depends on, just depends on preference. I mean, which one you would rather have? I guess. I I would agree. They both take a lot of maintenance. Um, the maintenance for an all on four, though it doesn't have to be on four. It could be on six. A uh, minimum of four. Um, it's a little more difficult. Uh, getting the floss up there, I'm sh Ashley, you will find that because uh, you really got to, it's difficult. You got to use tools to get the floss through, got to work it through. Uh, water picks are very messy. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then you've got to make sure that when it's fixed, you use a non-abrasive toothpaste because you don't feel anything. You could, you could actually make them scratch and stain more. Um, it, 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 there's pros and cons. They're different. Now, a snap-in, uh, it's easier to be thoroughly uh, hygienic with them because you pop it out, you have easy access. As Ashley said, you could put the denture in a sonic cleaner with a cleaning agent. I recommend liquid crystal, I but love whatever. And, uh, but, Me too. but you could use that. The good thing about liquid crystal is it doesn't affect O-rings. Your O-rings last longer if you use that. If you use anything that fizzes, it 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 wears quicker. Um, yeah. But they wear anyway. All right, let it's, me interrupt you yeah. for a minute. He's talking about his product line, and there's a link in the description of this video. It will take you to what we're the products that we're talking about here. His and liquid crystal, his yeah. ultrasonic cleaner. You oh, guys, I got a good it. Um, and then, and then you can brush um, the implants with a extra soft toothbrush, and um, you shouldn't use a fluoridated toothpaste because fluoride has been proven to cause tarnish of metal uh, implants. I mean, it's a low degree. I'm sure lots of people do it and have no problem. But you, the ideal, the only one that the ADA recommends is cleaner than paste uh, and the brush. And then the wipes are very convenient to polish uh, the posts or the abutments that stick out. But you know, again, it takes a lot of it takes a lot of steps to clean the overdenture, the, the snap in, and to clean the implants. But you know, it takes a lot of work to take care of natural teeth too. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, there's no. There's no. Uh, you, you can't neglect anything. <laughs> it all takes no, time. you'll pay for it, literally. But, but as Ashley said, ultimately, it's going to be a matter of personal preference. It's going to be a, uh, a matter of finances. But, you know, everybody, 
and I don't want to discourage you, Ashley, and I don't want to applaud you, Jan, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> I but I do, I, I'm, I'm doing everybody. But they have done all kinds of polls and they assume that people who have had a snap-in and have a, a all on four or oral on whatever, something that doesn't come out, and they assume that people overwhelmingly would prefer the fixed. And it's not so. It, it's closer to 50-50. And it's really all about the hygiene issue. That's, yeah. you know, if, if it wasn't a hygiene issue, everybody, if they could afford it, would prefer the permanent, the fixed, we call it. Well, hygiene, hygiene really, a lot of people just c cannot take care of the permanent implant bridges. Now, you're, these are the clean and dent wipes he's talking about. I like these because I have them in my purse. And if I'm out eating or something and I just want to wipe my teeth, I, I do that. And they help it remove adhesive. So you can use them either way. So. These and they're are, good to clean off those little posts. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to get some of those. I don't. And I don't. they're ADA accepted too. The only wipes that have the ADA acceptance for it. I didn't send people. you the wipes. I, I thought I did. Well, we will. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, I keep a little bag of stuff that I take everywhere. And if I have an issue or something, I have the clean it paste and the toothbrush in the bag. So I'll go to the bathroom wherever I'm at, pop them out. I, I don't care. I'll clean I'll them in wherever I am, pop them back uh, in, go about my business. I you know, saw Michael. <laughs> sorry, I just didn't want to forget. I saw that Michael uh oh. about the injection he said it, it's not swollen um and he said that the dentist injected deeply into the nerve it may take longer it could take even six months at the most if it was injected in the nerve for the feeling to come back uh but i am sure well i'm not sure but i'm pretty sure the feeling will come back eventually but i would check with the dentist uh and just let them know that there's been a, a complication and see what he thinks or she thinks. Or we have another mm -hmm. question. Michelle, I want to ask if it's normal for the surgeon to leave parts of teeth during extraction. Should I worry? Uh, you're the, you're the I would. I would. Yeah. I, I mean, I would. Uh, that's not a, typically a good situation. There may be a reason why the surgeon left the root tips there um but it's not typical hey i have a question dr b um okay. when you get when you get implants on your e-day is it less common for you to, to develop a bone spur down the road than somebody who gets traditional dentures well you know the more surgery at a time the more likely you are to have a bone spur I would, I would okay. assume. Okay. Just right. one minute. Jan, we have a question. Can you chew easier in your snapping dentures than your immediate dentures? Oh, heck yeah. Uh, I would hope so. <laughs> heck yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because, like, you know, they're on there. <laughs> they're that would be 13 thousand six hundred down the drain <laughs> yeah i know I'd, i'm tenacious i'd be going back and back and back <laughs> but uh someone, yeah. and someone said what do you think of a dentist filling the same two three times within one month oh find another one <laughs> <laughs> that's about right yeah that's okay. crazy melody says i currently have and then someone Oh, what's that? Yeah, you're doing it. That's the one I was reading. Okay. I currently yeah, have so implants, two on bottom and four on top. Is it possible to go to all on four from a snap-in? Uh, well, that would depend on uh, the implants and the bone and et cetera, et cetera. But and the placement. she said she has four on top and two on the bottom. It's possible on the top, but on the bottom, she has to have at least two more. Yeah. And if there are many that's, implants, then you couldn't take it any further. she may further. need six or eight. Yeah. That's what I think she was asking. Can I get four 
on the bottom. Can they add two more is what I understood. I would assume so. Yeah. As long as you I, have the bone to put them there, I would think so. Yeah. It'd be a tight fit, though, wouldn't it? I mean, well, I, I don't know. It depends. I'm happy with my two, so I don't know. No. <laughs> oh, um, I see Mr. Silverman in the chat. You see Josh Silverman in there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, gun oh, yeah. Guy. <laughs> That's not his gun guard account, though. So I don't. I, it, Josh, is that you? I don't hear great things about the gum guard. It really filled a gap. Um, yeah, that was a, that was another example of something that a dentist. You know, it, it's hard to relate for most dentists because they're not missing teeth. Yeah, uh, right. you know, necessity is the mother of invention. And you know, I came up with my products by listening to my patients. Uh, Josh, I, I know the story. He was a patient. He yeah. lost all his teeth and he was having severe jaw problems and there was no simple solution. So he came up with it. Yeah. <laughs> I love that idea too. Yeah. Josh, yeah I'm, there's still literally no, oh, I'm sorry. There's still literally no other ones out there. Like no, that's what I mean. No. Yeah. Totally, totally Richard. Yes. Oh, Michael said, if I glue my top denture, will that help with the gagging to stop? Y yes, you need, it, yeah, you, it needs to fit really well for the gagging to stop. Well, uh, there's, there's several, that's, that's true. I mean, I agree with you completely. <laughs> A loose denture is definitely going to cause more gagging, yeah. but there may be other things involved. Um, the back of the denture could go too far back. Um, and impinge on uh, the soft palate, and that'll make um, increase the gagging. You want you want that denture typically to end at the junction. If you feel your palate, it's hard, and then further back suddenly gets soft. And yeah. you want it to typically end at that junction and just slightly impinge on that soft palate, and that creates a seal. But it you know, it's all personal, it may be too much. So uh, adhesive will probably help, but I would say if this is a new denture and this is, you know, this is a new problem, obviously, because it's a new denture, I would go back and see the dent dentist and see if uh, sometimes just a, a five minute, well, nothing's five minutes, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, a simple adjustment uh, outside the mouth, of course, can really help. Yeah. It seems like with that problem that people can get, you know, just the back where you were talking about, just, I mean, the very, just the slightest change and it'll make all the difference. Just, yeah. just the trim it. I mean, that's I said, all, it doesn't take much. Yeah. Yep. You yeah. know, in, in your mouth, it's really sensitive. <laughs> you can, yeah. well, I don't have to tell any of you, but it, there's a lot of nerves in your mouth. And then to be holding on false teeth, you know, it, it's it's difficult. There's a lot of challenges, as you all know. Oh yeah, he said he did shave the back. Are you are you did you glue them in yet? Have you tried adhesive yet on them, Michael? I don't know. All right, my mom has a question for you. Okay. okay. My mom loves Doctor B and his products. She's, okay. she's just so excited when he. He sent her some stuff and she was just really excited. Okay. My mom has the implants and then the bar. She got them right when implants first started. And then her teeth sit on that, the bar. In fact, this is the first year she showed me. She said she never would show me because she said, once you see this, you can't unsee it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, pretty different. Yeah. She wanted to know if, if that is still done that way. Yes, and it's fantastic. Uh, the bar, if it, you may, if you wanted to, you may consider doing that because um, it really the denture has like a, a sleeve that fits on the bar, and it's not just hooking on one implant, one implant. The bar really stabilizes it from um, lateral movement. Um, okay. it, it's a good thing. It's not done as often as it used to 
because implants have really improved and a lot of times it's easier to just place two more implants than to have the bar and and the result is better but you know for two implants in a bar it's a good thing but seems like the bar so like, many people um, get by without it and they used to do a lot more of them seems uh, like the bar would even out the load too right you know it what evens I mean? out like, the load it'll take more yeah well you know kind of like on and all on four they're all connected in the teeth true that's true Okay, Michael said, Michelle, why do you want to get implants? Are you having issues with your bottom denture? No, not yet. I'm not having any issues at all. These fit great. I'm talking down the road. I know that I'm going to lose bone and I know my ridge is going to start shrinking. That's when I know I'm going to have a problem with it. And I want to do this before I have the problem. But I'm going to talk to my dentist and see how my bone is now and if I how long I can wait because you're supposed to go in yearly for a gum check and an oral cancer check yes yes mm -hmm. so when i do that i'll talk to him then about about doing this um someone asked you or no i have a question here do you still have to um take your snap indentures out at night can you leave them in at night what, what do you do with them well, I'll leave that to Jan, and then I'll maybe add something. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. And I'll leave this to Ash, too, because you really have a removable dentures yeah. now, too, that kind okay. of snap on. I've heard of people leaving them in, but that is a disaster, because it all it does is build up bacteria in your mouth and your gums and around your post. And you, do, you really do not want to do that. To me, it's like letting my my mouth rest and um you know just letting letting them woosa <laughs> you know so uh i i would never personally ever recommend um leaving them in now there's a caveat to that when i first got my dentures i had to have them in you know because my mouth was getting used to them and changing. The best and way to get used to them. Don't, yeah. Yeah, don't really take them out. I did that. I'll admit that much. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I did do that. But, I mean, come morning time, I couldn't get those things out fast enough and clean them <laughs> and get the new, new liner in there. <laughs> I think that's the main takeaway. Like, if, if you do, if you're somebody who has to sleep in your dentures for a medical reason or, or whatever the reason is, um, your cleaning routine has to be, like, on point, pristine. Make sure you clean, 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 clean if you're going to sleep in them and wear them 24 7. That's what I'm going to say. You go to bed, clean them when you wake up. You know, if yeah. you get up early in the morning and you know, you're not, you have problems sleeping, clean them then, clean them again. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I use the gum guards at night. That's what I wear. And mm -hmm. especially with having those implants, they're, they're capped off. Well, I have abutments on the top and capped off on the bottom. The implants help to anchor that gum guard, so it, it's not moving around as much. Yes. So that's what I use at night. So that's awesome. Well, I, I, you know, I think you guys answered that question beautifully. <laughs> you know, I, there's yeah. there's no rules in this world, and I know people who had snap-ins who never slept in them. Uh, and I know people who always slept in them said they couldn't breathe if they didn't sleep with them, said they had headaches if they didn't sleep with them, said that they cut up their gums if they didn't sleep with them, and other people didn't sleep with them. But as Ashley said, if you're going to sleep with them, make sure you take them out at least sometime during the day. Uh, make sure you clean them thoroughly. And uh, you know, again, I recommend Sonic Cleaner and Liquid Crystal, but you got to clean them. Uh, make sure you brush the abutments, uh, clean them uh, with a non-fluoridated toothpaste. Um, you know, it, it's very, very important, but there is no rule. But you brought up a great point, uh, Ashley, especially for people who have implants. And if they don't want to sleep them, sleep with their um, snap-ins in place. I would imagine the gum guard would be a great thing. Because yeah. they can take it out their denture, let their gums breathe. I don't think it's the same material. I don't think it fits the same. 
And, you know, that would be maybe a great solution for people. Yeah. 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 That's perfect. I'll be right back. Sure. Keep going. Yeah. Okay. okay, we got this. <laughs> I'll say okay, that. You're in charge. Is that Josh's gum guard you got, Ash? Um, yes, that's it. Like I said, it's the only one out there for denture wear, so it's mm. it's pretty much perfect for snap-in dentures when you can take them out at night and put the gum guard in. And of course, regular denture wearers can, you know, traditional denture wearers can wear them too. Um, yeah. I was just gonna say, um. I was gonna toot Dr. B's horn here for a minute. Oh, I, I love his products. I've used them from the my E Day, which was a year ago. I've used them every day. Oh. I've used the Clinident, the Liquid Crystals, the Ultrasonic Cleaner, and I've had zero issues, no infections, no just like what Jan said, no problems. So yeah, I love to hear that. I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> yeah. It's I amazing. Use the sometimes too, in addition. Sometimes I'll oh, go you. an extra mile because I'm extra and use the oak, but but I always use the um, Dr. B's. Well, thank yeah. you. <laughs> I I got that fresh and bright. I think it's called. That's what the dentist told me to get, and I well, use it's been that. around for a long time. Yeah, but it it doesn't hold a candle to your products. <laughs> well, you can't sure. use it in your mouth. That's the main thing. Yeah. yeah. But exactly. I mean, it's a good product. It was a good product. Um, it's just not the best product. Yeah. <laughs> well, know. when I compared it to yours and that, I was like, whoa, this is like night and day. I was so impressed. I was super impressed. So, well, thank you. Thank and you. And you know, you, you, you don't have to be missing teeth to like clean a dent. Uh, you can <laughs> use it on natural teeth, too. It's actually, yeah. uh, it, it has a lot of benefits. It has, no, um, it's the least abrasive toothpaste of all the toothpaste out there, and it has moisturizing agents. Yeah. And it's a universal toothpaste. It's the only uh, universal toothpaste for dental prosthetics like dentures, implants, and the whole mouth that has the acceptance by the ADA. So it's, yeah. it's got a lot of good things. It has no fluoride, but it has a pH of 9.5. So it's naturally anti-cavity because it's very alkaline. Yeah. But, uh, oh, anyway, I'm glad you like it. I love Thank it. you. Hi, Lori. Okay, somebody asked what the gum guard was. Lori. That's what I went. I went to get my gum guard boxes. I have a lot here. The gum guard. If you order this, Josh Silverman made this, and I don't know if it's the same Josh Silverman that's in the chat, but he made it. So. <laughs> and you have two cut. He'll send a guard, and this guard actually you see has teeth on it. Uh huh. This one does, and then there's the soft one with the pink, and there's also a white one that I have here too. But he sends two cutties that I can't get out the box right now. Hold on, I'm not doing a very good job here, am I, Josh? Okay. <laughs> this white. There's a white putty. Okay. And a, and a blue putty and you just mix those together and you form them into this okay. and then you put it in your mouth and you let it sit there for a while and it forms to your gums and upper and lower he has and then you can wear this when you don't have your dentures if you don't like not sleeping with your dentures at night you could wear this because it just rests on your gums it doesn't hook on your it's not secure like your dentures are this will just rest on your gums and it feels really good it helps with your jaw pain because you know when you don't have your dentures in how bad your jaws hurt can you i i know mine do at night they mine start to well the reason why is because you don't have your teeth stopping and mm -hmm. this jaw goes too much yeah. and that hurts the anatomy there there's a, actually between the upper and lower jaw on both sides. This is a very complicated joint. Mm -hmm. the, I don't know. Do you want to hear about it? But Go ahead. I'll be quick. It's a very complicated joint. Unlike any other joint in your body, it has to, the two joints have to work together, like when you open and close, and then they have to work opposite. When this side goes up, this one's going in, and et cetera, et cetera. And they do all kinds of weird things. Uh, like your knee which is complicated, works by itself. <laughs> but this has to work both. So 
um, I don't know, evolutionary. This is a complicated joint. There's a cushion between the upper and the lower jaw on both sides. And this little like cushion, when you have when you overclose, you can squish or even mis displace that cushion, that little pad. And that causes the pain. And that's why things like, well, dentures, some people can't sleep without their dentures. And that's why the gum guard helps prevent it because it prevents you from overclosing. And there's the lower, the lower and the upper. I'm getting it together here. I have a whole box of this. I'm getting together here. <laughs> and when you, when you wear it, it, it will hold your, it, it will hold your jaw in the, like in a, the correct position. Oh. And it will custom fit you. And if you have implants, like Ashley has this and she, she, it fits around her implants. Yeah. That's now, awesome. when you go to the drugstore or somewhere to buy a gum guard that they are all made for teeth. All the gum guards are made for teeth. They come in this tiny little thing with this thing that you have to heat up. Yeah. And then you put it in your mouth. If you have teeth, I did a video on this because somebody, another channel said, just go buy this. This is all you need. I've had burns on my gums for doing this for about days. I did a video on this when I did a gum guard video, just showing you that you that you can't use this. Yeah. These are for teeth. No. That's so, not made to go on your gums. No, I'll, really? I'll put the gum guard link. It might be down in the description, but I'll make sure to put it in there if anybody's interested. Okay, and please. I have videos on it also. Can yeah. you explain uh, why there's three? I understand why there's one where you got pink gums and white teeth. Um, why are there three different types? Why is there the all pink, the all white, and, and uh, is, is it lower. about pricing? See this oh, one, the teeth. Right, Doctor B. If you wear this, because I've had it in, it, th these look like you have teeth. Right, I know. So I'm just farmer. wondering why aren't they all like that? Um, or, he's working why on are that. there three different types? He's working on that. He's oh, okay. working on an upper for this one now. Oh, so it's only for the lower. Yeah, I this is it. just now oh. for the lower. But if you wear the white gum guards, it looks like you have teeth. In no, it. now, now I'm now I'm understanding the different types. Well, the, the one that yeah. looks like it's more firm than the other the other ones. They're more flexible. Yeah, that's the main this difference. Is, this is a little firmer than this one, you know. But I have them, and I have my, I have my putty in my white ones, and I've done those on this, and it looks like you have teeth in your mouth. So if you can't afford to like buy immediate dentures, and you need to wait after your extraction, oh, wow, that's six a weeks great. Later, and go without teeth, you can wear these in place of a denture and go out and not be embarrassed. You know, that's just a buy great the idea. One. Well, another thing, I think, um, I think sleeping without your dentures, you know, you get those mouth wrinkles, those fine lines and wrinkles around your mouth. And I think with sleeping with the gum guard in there instead of nothing, you're preserving your face from getting those lines, you know. You're totally yeah. right. Yeah. So, right. Yes, I do. Yes. This is fine. I have four on top and two on the bottom. All right, Rob's Rob's opening the white one. I couldn't get it open. <laughs> oh, it's not there. I took it out already. Okay, I wear my white one. So, but the, that's with the gum guards. They're they're good. They're are they like reasonably good. priced? Josh is um, going to go. Well, yeah, <laughs> they are. There might be a coupon on the website. Not mm -hmm. sure. No, they're not there. I think they're yeah, hundred dollars for both upper and lower. Josh is in there. That's for Josh. That's, That's the pro. Thank you, Josh. Josh, I'm really doing a bad job with this. This is all impromptu. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, containers of gum guards, and they're on the floor, and I'm just looking through everything. Josh, we should have had you come up. The other version is the PM. You can wear any time. Okay. Thank yeah. you, Josh. Well, you should have came in under your gum guard, Josh. But I, I recommend if you can't afford teeth or you anything like that, get the gum guards. Just get yeah. the gum guards. 
And then that'll take your embarrassment away. You can go to the bank. You can go to the grocery store. Nobody will know. Yeah. Go look. Go back and look at one of my videos. Okay. And if you're gonna wear them all the time, I like always that, thought it was just. Uh, I always thought it was just to protect the TMJ and rest of joy. I never thought about this as an alternative to immediate dentures. That's a fantastic idea. Well, you cannot yeah. eat with these. That's the only thing you can't eat with these. But you can go out in public or go to family events because I know I've gotten a lot of emails where people are so embarrassed because they don't have their teeth yet. Let me tell you, the psychology, as Ashley pointed out, is just as important, if not more important, than the psychology you yes. know, going without teeth. Um, I can't imagine not having any teeth. Josh, uh, the individuals are 49, upper and lower sets are 99. So I mean, for, 100, for 100 bucks, you can have a makeshift denture until you get your dentures or use these i'm telling you they fit they make my gum my jaws feel so good when i wear these that's awesome yeah okay and will you put the link in the description right i will put the link if it's not down there i'll, I'll make sure to put it in there okay um, but it's gumguard.com yeah that, that's i should that's know that thing. i was on with josh that other one of the other types so. <laughs> Oh, the pro is 149 upper coming soon. And we are always running promos or reach out to the customer service. And you can always call them and there might be a coupon. They are very, very understanding. You know, what I've learned so far with working with Dr. B, I, I just love Dr. B. He's been so helpful <laughs> answering questions and just being there. All I have to do is shoot him an email and he just responds with what I, you know, just helping me. And he cares. He really cares. Just like Josh. Josh yeah. invented, he's, Josh stayed up many, many nights and he still does thinking <laughs> and making these and denture box. All, all of you guys just do this from your heart. Yeah. You know, yeah. that that's what you do. And I, I think that's just fantastic. Dr. B, let's talk about your smile guide on denturewares.com. Uh, sure. <laughs> okay, Dr. B has made how many how many designs have you made? Uh, well, there's 18 uh, basic designs with the same length. Uh, there's 18 designs of teeth and then there's basically three length combinations. Right. So if you multiply that, that's three times 18. I'm not so good with math, but uh, I think that's like 54. Right now, <laughs> but, but anyway, what it, it, it's not that complicated though. Nowadays with digital, um, imaging, mm -hmm. you can actually, and, and now they even have 3d imaging. You can place all of those into, uh, an image of your face and your smile and try them on, but you know, you don't need 54, but basically it's, you, you have three types of eye teeth, three types of um, lateral incisors, the side teeth, and three types of central incisors. And you multiply that, that's 27. I'll, I'm being real quick. And uh, nine of them don't look right because the side tooth is more square than the front tooth. Eliminate that, and that gives you 18. And then there's the different length. Of, without having the picture, it's kind of hard to go over it. But Michelle and I did a video on it. And if anybody's interested, I'd suggest you get, just go back and look at that. It's cool. I'll show them on my phone. But on DentureWares.com. Oh, yeah. Dr. It's on DentureWares.com. I forgot. Dr. <laughs> Dr. B's website is DentureWares.com, and it's getting upgraded right now. So It's, it's not the, the website for my products, but it is something that we've been – I actually started this website in nine, in 2004. Okay. Uh, it's just, I've been distracted. <laughs> well, let me show them what it is. And then I'm going to ask you a question. If you go on denturewares.com and start and just start scrolling down, you'll come to his video there and then you'll see those. And then you'll see my video there. So in between the two videos, you can click on these pictures and what he has done is he has put different teeth in in a denture 
so you actually we did it with at, porcelain veneers at the time but i, I was inspired by dentures well you can go look at these and um see what kind if you want to, if you're wanting to know how to pick out your shape of smile your teeth and everything he has he has designed this that you can go on this denturewares.com you can screenshot these pictures and click on them and oh no there's if you go sideways there there's it just scroll sideways and he's got several different designs that you can go screenshot a picture look at the picture take it to your dentist and say i, I want teeth like this because yeah. what you've done is you've put pointed with rounded and you want to explain some of that how you came about doing this uh well it was from uh <laughs> i had a lot of when you're doing porcelain veneers it's not so it's it's not easy at all it's difficult to redo them uh i know you're having a lot of difficulty uh ashley but at least it doesn't hurt and the damage is done but if you cement porcelain veneers and the patient doesn't like it well you've got a problem there uh, a lot of problems and it's not so easy to redo them and i started I was right there at the beginning of the dental, uh, the cosmetic dental revolution, so to speak, at the beginning of the 80s. And I was there, a pioneer with porcelain veneers. And um, so I was doing a lot of them. And I thought that I was doing everything great. <laughs> you know? I thought I was creating a perfect ideal smile. And for a lot of people, uh, it was a perfectly ideal smile, but for a lot of people, it wasn't. And I didn't know what it was. The color was right. The gums were healthy. Uh, the length was basically right. I mean, what was wrong? And I had a lot of post cementation depression um, after they were in, you know, because I could tell they weren't as thrilled as I was. Mm -hmm. And I started talking to my patients every day and learning and changing things and realizing different length combinations, you know, make the difference. They give the smile personality, different um, edges, you know, are they round? Are they square? Are they a combination? Are the eye teeth pointy? Are they round? Are they flat? Um, so I started planning all this with denture teeth and then I actually did the case. Um, they were all porcelain veneers uh, because por people with porcelain veneers really need this. Denture wearers really need this. Everybody who's doing a smile design really needs this. So we, we placed them all, and we couldn't do this without digital photography. It was like I was thinking about this, planning it, and then suddenly digital cameras came out like in 2000, 2001, and suddenly I could actually do this. And I made 18 sets of veneers and three sets at different lengths. And we placed them all, um, she was my dental hygienist, and we placed them all, photographed them all, put them all on the screen, and then had her pick. And then we cemented it but we used all those pictures and it was very hard taking the pic, putting them back in, putting the lipstick on. I should have done it with a dental <laughs> patient, but I, I, you know, whatever, <laughs> <laughs> but it worked. And, uh, you know, it, it really applies to denture wearers every and anybody who's doing a smile makeover. Well, I know, like, then I'm going through the process again with DentureBox now, just so we could film it from start to finish. And I used your smile guide to pick out a different design of teeth. They're going to, my teeth are going to be different than this. They're, well, they look great the way they are. Well, I'm going a little more rectangular, you know. Well, yeah, you know, personal yeah. preference. Yeah. But I, maybe that's the way your teeth really were. Well, and I was able to use your smile guide and send pictures to Jen so she could see exactly what i was talking about well that's, that's awesome. exactly what it's for mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah you so, know a picture's worth a thousand words 
So if any, and we did a video on that a couple of videos back, Dr. B and I did on that and his product line. And I just think the smile guide is awesome. And yeah, I didn't, yeah. I didn't know this existed when I first got my dentures. You know, I was so happy. I'm like, this right. is cool. <laughs> you know, it takes the guesswork out for everybody. Yeah, yeah. Your, your dentist or your dentures, they'll be happy to have these pictures because they want to mm -hmm. make you happy. And, you know, you can't read anybody's mind. And not only can't you read a mind, but without the pictures, you may not really know what you like. Yeah. It's like getting your hair it, cut. If you could just see it before it gets oh, cut yeah. with your face on it, you know. <laughs> well, you can. You can do that. It's just... Not, we used to have digital imaging in my practice. That's why I developed this, the smile guide. There was a digital version of it. Uh, but now the digital versions are way more sophisticated. As I said, you could do it much faster. You could do even three dimensional. Um, so, but not every dentist or denturist is doing that, but they can all look at the pictures. Yeah, yeah, it, it exactly. makes it really And then you could verify it at the wax triumph. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. It, it makes it very helpful. But I'll put, I think I have the link for DentureWares down there. If oh, I, it's if easy, it, DentureWares.com. Yeah, it's DentureWares.com. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's being renovated right now. So it's part it's partially up and partially not. So but the choose your smile is up. Yeah, that it's called the Lauren Library, and that cool. that is a your smile guide. That's so, awesome. does any does hey, anybody Michelle, else have any other questions? Michelle, my my volume went out. I don't know what's going on, so I can't really hear. I can see you. Okay, we can hear I just you. can't hear y'all very good. I just want to let we you know. We can hear you also. Okay. <laughs> um, I can hear you. It's just just a little bit. All right, I think we're going to end it for tonight. And I'll have the link to Dr. B's, all his information in the in the description, along with Ashley has a channel, and so does Jan. Jan has a channel also, simply Jan Homestead. So, and it's really, it's really nice. She has chickens and everything. In fact, I was able to yeah, text her the chickens. other night. With, we had a chicken problem at our, it, what's that? <laughs> I was going to ask at the beginning before we went online how the chickens were. <laughs> They're great. Our new chickens are doing fantastic and they're in with the current flock. And so next thing are my livestock. I've waited, gosh, over a year to get them. So I'm really stoked about that. But they probably won't be born till March, but I can't tell you what it is. So. Okay. <laughs> That's fun. So you guys have a channel, man. <laughs> well, if you have any questions, you know, you can go on Jan's channel. Her email's in her description or in her about section, and, and I'm sure she can help you the same as Ashley. You can yeah, ask it's them, in you most know, of my descriptions. Uh, people say they can't find it on the about page. I don't know why okay. I see it there, but it's all right. in all well, our videos, so. in our video descriptions. All right, everybody. Thank well, thank you guys thank all for joining me. us. This thank has you. been great. It was nice to meet you, Dr. B. Nice to and meet the gum all you. Yes. Be in there too. And I'm gonna put Thanks, the gum guard yeah. down there too. Okay, all right. Thank you. That was a wealth of information. <laughs> ah, I'm I know. So organized. Ah, no, really, I'm not. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the are open and dumb. <laughs> So I, Josh and I need to have a video call so he can help me organize my, my stuff. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. I'll I'll see everybody next time. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.